Hey everyone, and welcome back. My name is Colton Howard. I am your dedicated technical specialist for everything Maximo and Tririga. And today we're going to be doing an overview of IBM Tririga Dynamic Space Management. So as part of the agenda today, we really have three key things I want to cover. The first is some of the challenges our clients face around space management. We'll talk to a little bit around what Tririga Space Management is and then go into a demonstration. So when we look at the overall, overall ecosystem of what it takes for an end-to-end -end IWMS system for facilities across lease administration, space management, construction projects, facility management, there can be upwards of 20 plus different systems that clients and companies leverage in order to complete that end-to-end -end journey. And that's really where the value of Triviga comes in as it is a single source of truth for all of this key information. And it allows you in companies to significantly reduce costs it takes from managing integrations across these different types of systems, uh, improve performance and efficiencies through having a one, one single system for your users to log in, conduct their work, and log out. And when we look at some of the challenges specifically clients are facing around space management, we oftentimes find that within commercial spaces, anywhere from 30 to 40% of these spaces are underutilized and companies are continuously looking to have this information to gauge, okay, do we continue our leases and continue to operate within these spaces that are not utilized? Or maybe they have reduced, um, reduce capacity that they could otherwise reduce the overall space. Uh, I have a couple of clients up in New York that through running these exercises, they realized they could actually reduce their overall real estate footprint by well over $2 million. So that $2 million is something that they save year over year, just because they would have this information in one place, they, they could analyze and make decisions based off of that. Now for the demonstration that we're gonna to see today, we're really gonna be focusing on space allocation and optimization. And so that's that's really the goal of today's demo is really gonna be focusing around space management. How can space planners have all of the key information that they need at a few clicks of the button? How can they, as policies and standards across the business are being enforced, such as social distancing, how can space planners be able to quickly open up Tririga, be able to enforce these, these new standards across the business uh, quickly and efficiently, and again, in a single source of truth. Now, taking a step back real quick, uh, Tririga manages the entire real estate life cycle from the minute that you acquire a facility all the way to when you dispose of it. And these key green highlighted areas is where we're really going to be focusing some of our tie, time on today. So this is a smaller part of the overall real estate life cycle process, but the value from it is significant. I mentioned the use case before where we had a reduction in real estate footprint that saved $2 million a year for one of the clients that I work up with in New York. Uh, but space management, when we when talk about it, improving productivity, enforcing policies, optimizing uh, occupancy usage across our real estate, this is these are key areas that we're seeing clients leverage at Maximo for. And so uh, these are benchmarks of ROI points that clients realize through adopting Tririga and so we took our, our client footprint and we were able to uh, accurately assess, okay, what's, in, what's a realistic ROI you can realize through leveraging uh, Tririga? And, and just to point out before we jump into the demonstration, uh, we are the leader as an IWMS system across the key disciplines that I highlighted earlier. So uh, with that, I, I wanna go ahead, just talk really quickly about a, a reference that we have, uh, Dow Chemicals they were able to realize very similar savings um, by increasing their, their facility use leveraging, leveraging Tririga. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the demonstration. So this, for this demo, I'm gonna be playing the role of Sam, the space manager for a large retail company. Now, as a space manager in the past, I really struggled with the time it took to gather space usage data and keep floor plans up to date. 
Now, when space demands or standards changed or utilization reports were requested or maybe redesigns of our spaces were required, it was almost impossible for me to quickly and efficiently gather that information or make changes to meet these demands. Now, as a space planner, I need a tool that has all of this information at a click of the button. So for this demo, we're gonna be showing a popular use, use case, it's a COVID-19 use case. And let's say as a employee or as employees return to work, Sam has been tasked to update spaces to enforce social distancing policies across their Charlotte Watson Center quickly by leveraging Tririga. So the first thing that I'm gonna do as Sam the supervisor, or Sam, the space planner, is I'm gonna go ahead and open up Tririga. I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And immediately, Sam is gonna be presented with key information that she is responsible for every day. And this is gonna include the overall occupancy, utilizations rates. And why this is important to Sam is these can help influence key decisions around renewing leases, the overall real estate footprint that they have, uh, reductions, customer satisfaction. Um, we can see that it also contains information around stack plans um, across our organizations. How have, we organi how have we allocated space to different organizations? How are they uh, allocated? As well as reminders up in the top right of tasks that she needs to complete to do her day-to-day. -day. Now that Sam has been tasked to update spaces to enforce social distancing policy, she's going to go ahead and migrate over to the dynamic space planning tool within Tririga to update her properties that she's responsible for. So the first thing that we're going to see um, as we click the enter button within this table is all of the properties that she is responsible for, Sam the, Sam the space planner is responsible for on her day to day. The building that she's been tasked to look at is their Charlotte Watson Center. So let's go ahead and have her filter based off of that. And this is going to include, uh, we can go ahead and choose the second floor. This includes some key information such as the overall head count, vacant space, area occupied. And so for this demonstration, let's go ahead and open up the second floor. And this is going to give you a visual of what is of what this floor actually looks like. So let's go ahead and share this plan. Perfect. So here we pull up the second floor record. Now this includes all key information relating around this floor. It includes uh, information such as the overall location hierarchy. Down below, we can see CAD drawings. If we were to go over to contracts, we can see some of the leases that we have for this facility. Now, typically in the past, a lot of this information, uh, including area measurements, uh, contact details, these had to be pulled from multiple different systems. Tririga allows me, Sam, the space planner, to pull up the floor plan and immediately begin implementing new standards uh, for the floor. And it gives me that single pane of glass for all of this key information that I need to do my job. Now, again, as a, as a space planner, I've been tasked to modify some of the, the space plans. So I'm going to go ahead and click into the dynamic space planning module within this record. Now, as a space planner, it's, it's not only important for me to have a layout of the floor, but also the ability to quickly analyze the CAD information, such as uh, we can click here in layers, such as where's the furniture located. As you can see here, as I click in and out of these layers, you're going to see changes to the overall CAD drawing to reflect where this furniture is located, where are some of the doors, the walls, the plumbing. All of this information is then uh, quickly changed as I'm migrating through this. So not only do I have the, the floor plan itself, but also have some of the, the information within it. As you can see from the diagram, meeting rooms are, are colored in pink, workstations are colored in light blue. Now, for the purposes of understanding more intimate details about this space, I can also click on the space 
sh and to show detailed information about the space measurements. Um, here we can go ahead and click space record. And let's choose this meeting room right here to open up additional information. Here I can drag and show you on screen. This is going to give me more detailed information, including space measurements, the room's uh, capacity, phone numbers to reach to reach this, this room. For example, if I go over to contacts, uh, allocation, how is the space allocated? What have been the history of reservations? All of this information uh, is included just by drilling into that space. And here we can see an image of the space. As we go down, you can see a lot of the other key information that in the past for Sam was located in a different, different systems. So now let's go back to the actual floor plan. And as I mentioned before, Sam was assigned to enforce social distancing policy. And this policy requires that each member on this floor can only be assigned to a space that is within six feet or also 72 inches apart from one another. So what we can do here using the calculate distance function right here is we can go ahead and increase this. And I'm just gonna show you what it's gonna look like when I increase this to 72 inches apart. What this is automatically going to do is determine which spaces should be made unavailable based on the chosen distance factor. And here we see that's 72 inches. And here we can see which spaces should be made unavailable, which is in the light blue, and which ones should be made available in order to meet this criteria. So now that we know which spaces should be made unavailable as a space manager or planner, I want to be able to quickly choose the unavailable spaces to make sure we mark them as unavailable. So I, I bet anyone who's trying to reserve these areas won't be able to. So one thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do here is we're gonna go ahead and choose, let's select the available spaces. We're gonna choose all of the spaces here. And actually let's choose select unavailable since we did apply that criteria before. And let's go ahead and select the following. And automatically, you're going to see those locations that fit the criteria are now highlighted. And we can quickly go ahead and edit it. And we're going to set the new capacity at zero because we don't want anyone being able to reserve that. And the next thing we're going to go ahead and enter is available because we want to make sure that we can classify these spaces no longer available. Here we're going to hit continue. And as you can see, we now have in the system that these spaces will no longer be able to be reserved. These spaces have now been uh, made unavailable. So let's go ahead and clear our selection. So we have successfully now enforced the social distancing of workspaces for employees going forward. However, what about those employees that have already been assigned to one of the newly unavailable workstations? We're gonna to need to modify this in order to ensure that we can label these, that we can move around those individuals who are currently allocated to those uh, so that they are no longer they are no longer assigned to these locations. So let's go ahead and reselect these unavailable spaces. Um, here we can see, we click the unavailable. Let's go ahead and highlight these guys. And then over in the top left is where, as a space manager, I can go ahead and view people. Let's show the people that are allocated to these uh, places. Uh, we can go ahead and click on we can toggle move people onto the screen, and then we can go ahead and select remove people. And as you can see, it automatically removed any of those individuals that were allocated to those unavailable spaces because 
we were able to drag and drop over them and allocate them. So now what is important to do here is we need to now have, or we now see that all of those that were individuals that were moved now show up in the bottom left-hand corner in which as a space manager, I can now reallocate these individuals to areas that are available. So David, you're gonna be sitting next to, looks like we put them together. And as you can see, it's really easy to go ahead and reallocate. Looks like Herbert, I want you to hang out with your friends over here in a way that still fits, that still fits the standards that our facilities are now enforcing. So once we've completed, uh, we've done quite a bit here. We've we've gone ahead and marked uh, new. We've identified spaces that need to be unavailable. We marked them so they can no longer be reserved, and we also reallocated individuals to spaces. Now, there's one more thing I want to highlight as a space planner that's really important to me, and then we're going to go ahead and save this draft that we have uh, created so that it can move into either a move request or a permanent a permanent process. So here we're gonna go ahead and uh, show you one more thing that's really important to me. Let's go ahead and stop showing people for a second. But one of the things that I was showing earlier was a breakdown of space classes, right? We had our meeting rooms, we had our uh, office spaces, uh, restrooms that are defined in gray. But one other thing that's really important here is understanding, okay, so out of these allocations, as we're moving around individuals, as we're enforcing standards, how are these, these locations charged? To which organizations are they charged? What's the overall occupancy by different organizations across human resources, information technology, leasing, um, occupant stat statuses. Which of these spaces are occupied versus vacant? These are all extremely important components, not only from a reporting standpoint, but as we're enforcing these standards, having that visibility into how these, these locations are allocated so that we can make best decisions based off of that. Um, here, you know, we've made quite a bit of changes. Let's go ahead and create a, sna a scenario when call this phase two. Click save. Uh, we're going to save the changes that we have just made, and we're going to go ahead and begin to commit them. When we do this process, it's going to allow us really to do two options. We can either create a move request based off of all the information and all the changes that we've made. Uh, when we scroll through this, you're going to see a lot of the, the changes where they were currently located versus where the new space they're going to be located after, um, and other key information such as uh, contacts, uh, some of the updates we have made. And this is really important just as changes are being made, we're, we're logging this and it's going through the, the move processes that our organizations have set up. Um, but with that, uh, this is how Sam, the supervisor, is able to complete her mission of enforcing new policies when applying them to her facilities. So, so far we have seen how Sam, the space manager, can now utilize Tririga to help her, first off, save time gathering space usage data and keep floor plans up to date. We have seen how Sam can get greater access to valuable data such as real-time utilization trends, how she can meet demands from HR resources to ensure enough space for current and future headcount during rapid business processes and growth. Uh, she can also ensure spaces are filled out with appropriate IT infrastructure and furniture uh, to make sure that she can meet health and safety standards as well as employee expectations. And lastly, to ensure office layout is designed to comply with requirements. So with that, uh, thank you for watching this demonstration. As part of Next Steps, I'd love to learn more about how you all implement space management processes within your facilities and potentially pilot uh, Tririga at your facility. So thank you for your time. I look forward to, to working with you all in the future.